Okay, start. Okay, here we go. All righty. So uh, in this session, we're going to finish uh, the chapter on ARIMA models. And last time, the section that we stopped was uh, doing an example of an unseasonal, right? Uh, ARIMA model. So in this one, the, the next section talks about the estimation and order selection. So you can see in the in the beginning of, the, of this section that the, the authors have posted a, uh, 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 some videos uh, to give us a little more clarity about uh, the topic that we're reading. So one of the things that the ARIMA model, as, as it is implemented in these packages, the, the Fable uh, package, is uh, that it tries to minimize what is called the maximum likelihood estimation, MLE, okay? And MLE, basically, what it is, is our uh, sum of, of square errors, okay? So, for example, if you have the RIMA model, right, you have your in-sample uh, uh, data, which are, is the observed data of the training uh, set, and you'll have uh, certain predictions from the model, you're going to have the errors, right? So the errors, what are you going to do with that maximum likelihood estimation is square the errors and add it up, right? And what we're trying to do is minimize that, uh, you know, uh, objective uh, function. But you will ask, but wait a minute, I thought that ARIMA uh, was trying to minimize the AIC, right? The Akaike information criterion. And that's also correct. But internally, it's going to try to minimize the MLE first and then give you the AIC, all right? So the AIC is a step, second step uh, on it. The, 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 the reasoning for this is that remember that the least squares, they can be, um, they can be biased because of outliers, right? And also of the number of predictors. The AIC and the, the, the corrected version, the AICC, you know, with a little c, uh, is the one that then penalizes for adding uh, predictors, right? And it's a better information criteria to uh, compare models uh, between different iterations of the ARIMA models, okay? And we're going to be talking about that also in the next section. Okay, another thing that the book doesn't tell us, okay, is that the ARIMA function allows two objective functions, okay? It allows the MLE, which is the one that the, this book uh, discusses, the textbook, but also it mentions CLS. And I, you know, uh, was looking for that acronym. And what it, what it does is that the CLS is called the conditional least squares estimation, which is another version, okay? of the maximum likelihood, likelihood uh, estimation, okay? Um, the book doesn't tell us anything about it. And apparently the function implemented in the package is the MLE, not the uh, CLS. But the CLS then mention it as an alternative for that objective function, okay? So I basically, you know, that's basically the, the information that we have for the estimation and the order selection. So let's go back to our notes, okay? And the next section, the note 9.7, we're going to discuss how the ARIMA without any parameters, the ARIMA function uh, works. And what it does is that internally, it starts with certain models of the ARIMA parameters, remember the AR, which could be zero, could be one, could be two, until uh, you know the, the, the maximum parameter quantities that it can have is five. It can have more, but right now the function, the default is five. Then you have the differencing, right? The, the D component differencing, which is 
converting the non-stationary time series as a stationary, and then the MA component, which uh, is linked to the Q uh, parameter. And also it, it could be zero, one, two, until the default is five. Okay. So one of the things that the book mentions is how that algorithm without any parameters, in other words, when you don't give parameters to Arima, what it's going to do is an optimization. And it's going to be an internal heuristic algorithm to try to find from a subspace, a, a space, a state model space uh, given, is going to try to find the optimum ARIMA model for that time series, all right? So the first thing that the function does without any parameters, uh, you know, I have to be emphasized because you can give ARIMA the PDQ parameters, okay? You know, you can test different models manually, but if you don't give ARIMA those PDQ parameters, then the ARIMA is going to try to find the optimum model within that space that we're talking about. So the first step of the ARIMA function as implemented in the Fable package is first to convert the non-stationary time series to a stationary time series. And how is does it? Because of the D parameter, the one in the middle, okay? That is the differencing, right? And it's going to try uh, the parameter zero, which is no differencing. And it's going to then test it with the KPSS, okay? And we know that that's a hypothesis test for non-stationary and stationary. If the p-value is less than 0.05, that means that the time series is non-stationary, okay? So it's going to try with zero, with one, and with two. Usually, that's the traditional uh, space that that the, the D parameter is moving. More than two is very uh, exception, okay? So it's going to try zero, one, two. And for example, if zero passes the test, then it's going to go to the next one. If not, then it's going to try one and it's going to try two. Okay, and after two, probably that time series should be uh, a stationary, okay? Then, now that we have fixed the D, the differencing uh, parameter, then we're going to play with the P parameter, which is associated with the AR, autoregressive model, and then the Q with the MA model. Okay, the minimum average of the residuals of the errors. So how is it, how is it going to do it? Let me show you from the you know from the presentation. Let me show you what is happening with that selection. So the first thing is that the author tells us that there are four models that the Arima is going to try first. Okay, is going to try a model with p equal to and q equal to, okay? And I'm going to show you within the diagram where is it positioned. Then it's going to also test ARIMA with P0 and Q0. In other words, no AR or no MA component, just the difference. Then it's going to try another one with ARIMA with AR1, right? Activating AR and then uh, leaving the MA as zero. In other words, not using the moving average. And then another model that is backwards, not using the AR model and then using MA1, okay? Those are the four initial ARIMA models that the function tests. And what it's doing is, it's doing this. In other words, in this space where P moves from zero to uh, six, okay? In, 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 in practice it's five, but, for the reasons of the drawing, we're going to consider one more. So it's going to go from P0 to six and Q0 to six two, okay? So you'll have different options, okay? Different intersections that define the model for P and Q, all right? And the, po the, the points in orange are the ones, are the ARIMA models that the model is going to start. So let's say, that the model of P2 and Q2 equal to two from those four models is the one that minimizes the AIC, okay? It's minimizing the ML, MLE, but it's basing it on the AIC component, 
Okay, so it's going to choose that one, and then it's going to consider adding or subtracting one one unit, adding one unit, subtracting one unit from P and from Q. So to give you uh, a visualization of what he's going to do, if we are here, he's going to try all these models that it, that are like in a blue color. Okay, he's going to try. In other words, it's going to try first four models, and then from that point, it's going to try uh, a total, a maximum of nine models. If it's here, okay, let's say if it's here, then it's going to try these three because these two are already are already there, okay. But the 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 maximum uh, possible uh, Arima models from the first uh, you know from the first cycle is going to be nine if Arima P2 and Q2 is the one that is selected from the AIC, okay? From the minimum minimization of AIC. Okay, so let's say that this one here with parameters P3 and Q3 is the one that then is minimizing, is a better model than the P2 and Q2. So we go back, okay? And then we test the next models that we haven't tested. Okay, so we have tested already these ones, right? The P2, P, uh, Q3, uh, P3, Q2, et cetera. But the ones that are, you know, right in the, in the, in the vicinity of that model, we're going to try it. And then we're going to try another, another path, okay? So we're going to cover more of that space that we have, you know, uh, constrained P and Q. Eventually, the model is going to stop, okay? You know, it's not going to go forever. The model is going to stop, and depending on the results of the AIC, minimizing the AIC, is the model that is going to be the output from that ARIMA function, okay? So as you see, uh, sometimes, sometimes what happens is that all this, uh, you know, gray uh, intersections that they were not tested, Sometimes, and the author, you know, explains that, you know, with the, you know, with other techniques, model techniques that you can uh, produce an area model. Sometimes it gives you equal or better uh, uh, AIC numbers than the auto ARIMA function. But usually the auto ARIMA does a very good job at trying to optimize that model. Okay, so, and we'll see in an example, We'll see how, how how it works. Okay. So uh, any any comments uh, there? Uh, good. All right. So uh, let me go to the notes. Okay. So so for the modeling of the ARIMA, we have discussed the automatic algorithm. But as you can see, there is another process that you can follow using the ACF. Um, partial ACF plots, you can get some parameters and try to manually uh, search for an optimal ARIMA model. And the way that it works is described here, okay? You select the model order. In other words, depending on the, the visual information that you are seeing from the time series, okay? You manually choose uh, certain parameters, okay? Instead of the letting the auto, uh, 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 auto, uh, automated algorithm uh, choose it for you, okay? So if, if, if it's necessary to do the differencing because the, the time series is not stationary, you do the differencing, you use the ACF and PACF plots to gather information on the lags that are going to be the parameters that you're going to use for the AR and the MA uh, models. Then you try different models and you can also do both, right? You can choose manual uh, ARIMA models, and then you can compare with the automated uh, algorithm. And from those, then you check the residuals, you check the, you know, the performance. Are the residuals uh, behaving uh, in, a, in a random pattern? If they have no, you know, significant lags, if the histograms, you know, uh, are in a bell curve shape, if that is, you know, uh, the output that you're getting, then you can finally uh, pick a model 
to use for your forecast. All right. Okay, so let's do an example. We have been uh, using the global economy uh, data set for the examples uh, uh, for the ARIMA models. So let's take, last time we took the Egyptian exports. Now we're going to uh, choose the Central Africa Republic, which is the, you know, it was called before, it was called the, the Congo, the Democratic Republic. Now is the Central Africa Republic. And we are going to uh, plot the time series, right? And the first thing that you, you, you know, you can uh, derive from the time series is that the exports have a trend, right? Okay, have a trend that is uh, decreasing over time. So does the time series is stationary or non-stationary? If you have a trend, that is decreasing. If it's stationary or non-stationary? No, non-stationary. Non-stationary, correct? Okay. Uh, if, if you have a trend, if you have seasonality, if you have uh, a variance that it's, uh, you know, getting bigger, the amplitude getting bigger in time, all those things disqualify the time series as stationary. So, how do we uh, correct that situation to make it stationary? What do we use? Uh, we use the differencing. Uh... Exactly. Yeah, yeah, the differencing. Right now, there is no visible seasonality here. Okay. So we're going to use, uh, you know, a, a, a traditional differencing, the difference of the observation and the preceding, right? You know, to get the change the change in value, and that will give us the difference. And this is the product, right, of the difference. Also, uh, if you use the TES display, okay, with the plot partial, you only you don't only get the difference time series, you also get the ACF plot and the PCA plot, okay? And the PCA plot, you're going to use it to get the parameters for the autoregressive model, right? The PCF is to the right, the one to the right. So we observe that the significant lags here are lag one and lag two. So that could point to a model, an autoregressive model of order two. Okay, so in order two, we're going to get a constant. You're going to get the first lag with the coefficient, and then you're going to get the second lag with the corresponding coefficient. Okay, so you you can uh, set the parameters of P for that ARIMA model, P equal to two. And of course the D is going to be one, right? Because we apply one order of differences. Okay, so that will be your first model to try. Then if you look to the left, you see that the significant lags of the ACF, which is related to the MA, uh, you know, model, the moving average model. Here, the lags are one. Two is not significant, but then three is significant. Okay, so you have one and three that are significant. So that points to a MA three model. Okay, so the second candidate that you have, you have the first candidate is AR2, right? ARIMA2, differencing one, and no MA. The second model that, that we have as a candidate is P0, right? ARIMA with P0, differencing one, and then MA, the Q, the Q parameter equal to three to get those one and three legs in the, incorporated in the MA, all right? So we have candidates two models. Then we can add the auto ARIMA that we explained, you know, to compare with those, you know, uh, first and second manual models that we're going to be, you know, that, that we got from the interpretation of those plots. And we can get another, you know, a model, which is a search where we're going to use that stepwise uh, argument in the ARIMA model as false. 
So in the first one, in the first order algorithm that is called stepwise, the stepwise is going to be true. Okay. Here in, a, in the other uh, model, the stepwise is going to be false. So in other words, it's not going to go one on one. It's going to go uh, more, more, more than one. Okay. It's going to try, you know, kind of a randomized uh, search within that space that we discuss. The, the process that we discuss is stepwise, okay? Which is the default, the default of that function, okay? So now we have four models, four models that we can try, okay? So uh, we, uh, uh, we instantiate, right? Uh, the model with the, with, the, with the parameters, we get the manual PDQs, okay? We get the stepwise or RIMA with the defaults, and then another Orwarima with the set stepwise uh, equal to equal uh, stepwise equal to false, okay? To this deactivate that uh, you know that that one, one unitary uh, search, all right? And then uh, using the the same fit the same fit model, uh, we pivot right without the country, you know, so the country is constant, and then we're going to pivot. And we're going to get two uh, columns, the model and the order, okay? With the order is the result of that model, all right? So if you use the glance from the broom package, uh, it's going to give you the measurements, right? The metrics from that uh, fit and model. We're going to arrange uh, ascending, right? By AIC uh, small c, right? The corrected. AIC parameter, and then we're going to select, right, uh, from the dot model to the BIC. In other words, we're going, we're going to subset by those columns. So here, what is happening is that because we're uh, sorting by AIC in an ascending order, you get the first model is the one that got the minimum AIC, all right? which is this one here, okay? And that one corresponds to the search, which is the model, ARIMA or, or, or ARIMA model with the stepwise argument equal to false, okay? Then the second, you know, uh, the, the, the first runner up, right? The first runner -up was ARIMA 201, which is a manual model. Then the ARIMA 013, which is the second, manual model, and then at last the stepwise, which is the algorithm that we previously discussed. In other words, from the four models, the auto arima for, for the defaults, you know, that function uh, was the worst, in, in accordance to AIC, it was the worst performer, okay? So, you know, yeah, you have to play. You have to play with these parameters, uh, try to understand the plot, etc. because sometimes, you can do better than the Orwarima, you know, uh, uh, in, in a default mode, okay? Then, what is the model of the search, of that search uh, model, right? Because it's an Orwarima, so we don't know exactly what was the parameters that they were chosen by, the, by that algorithm, by the automatic algorithm. So if you use tidy with the fitted model, use tidy, and then you filter by search, right? It gives you the coefficients of the parameters. And this model that the auto arima uh, found that it was the minimum AIC, uh, correct AIC, is a, is a arima three, P3, differencing one and no MA. In other words, Q equal to zero. So the model is three, one zero, okay, because of this output. Okay, can can you see it? Okay, this is uh, uh, the first one. Um... Yeah, th this is this is the 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 optimum uh, area model from the AIC. Uh, C okay. the one that that was minimum, that mm -hmm. got the minimum metric there. Okay, but the problem is that. We we input manually the parameters for the for the manual two models, so we know the parameters. 
we don't know these parameters, okay? The search and the stepwise. So in order, you know, a very quick way to find out, you know, what are the parameters is with the tidy. With the tidy uh, function from the broom, from the broom package, okay? It gives you the, you know, from the coefficients that it's going to present you, you can deduct, you know, which parameters are, if they are from the AR or they are from the MA. Here, it gives you AR1, AR2, AR3. So we have a model AR3, okay? Because we have three parameters, three lags for the other regressive. We don't have any MA there. We don't have a coefficient for the MA. So the MA, the Q is going to be zero. And of course, the D is going to be one, okay? So the ARIMA model uh, from the tidy uh, function, it tells you that the ARIMA is three, one, and zero. Okay, P equal to three, D equal to one, and um, uh, Q equal to zero, okay? We'll do another one, okay? So, you know, it, it, will, it, will, it, will, it, will, it will make it uh, clearer. So with this model, which is the one from the search, you know, from the oral rima with the stepwise equal false, uh, we have to do the residuals to see if our assumptions are valid for, for that model, okay? So we see that the pattern is pre pretty random. The mean is centered to zero. That's a good sign. There are no lags for the residual. There are no significant lags. Everything within those dotted uh, blue lines. And even though there's a, there's apparently some outliers, okay, in those residuals, uh, the curve, the histogram is fairly, you know, fairly known, okay? If we want to go a little bit beyond and do a hypothesis testing with the L Young uh, box uh, function to check if the residuals behave as white noise, in other words, they are de re behaving randomly, then uh, when you do that with lag 10 and degrees of freedom, the degrees of freedom is going to be the parameters, equal to the parameters of the model. So the parameters of the model comes from the P and the Q uh, uh, you know, uh, variable. So P is three, Q is zero, so the degrees of freedom is three, all right? And with that, uh, with those parameters, we get that the P value is 0 0.569, very large, you know, way ahead from uh, 0 0.05, okay? And then we can choose that model, okay? Because the residuals are behaving as expected, is validating our assumptions of the model. Then we do some forecasting and we can do the forecast for the next five periods. In other words, in this case, a period is the year, right? Five years. And this is the, this is the forecast for those uh, five years. Okay, with the appropriate confidence intervals. All right? Good. Yeah. Any uh, yeah. Uh, if, can you can you go back up? Uh, scroll back up a bit uh, to a little bit more. Uh, okay, here. Mm -hmm. So basically, we use the tidy, and then we filter uh, the model to be search. Okay. Correct. So now we can see what we found. What we said. So the the estimate for the search model. Okay, yes. which is always a RIMA model. Yeah, yeah, it is within a RIMA. So yeah. you could have uh, AR, uh, you already have D because D is the difference. Okay. You know, it was okay. done already. Okay? okay. And in this case, is one. Okay. And you could have MA, but the thing is that there, you only have three parameters that correspond with the AR. You don't have okay. any MA components. So that's why you can deduct that the ARIMA model, that the search function, you know, the, the, the automated search uh, that we call search found was P3, D1, mm -hmm. MA0, okay? okay? Three, one, zero. Okay, now, now I understand one and zero. Okay, zero, I'm not, okay. I'm, not I'm, I'm still not sure about the... Yeah, because the, there's, no, there's no MA. In other words, if there was an MA here, let's say AR1, 
AR2 MA1. If there was okay. a coefficient for MA1, then the model would be two, one, one. Okay. Okay. But because there's no MA, the terms, there's no MA, that means the MA, the, the Q is, it has to be zero. It's an MA okay. zero model. Okay. But In other words, the, the error, the moving average of the, of the residuals, they were not significant, you know, to this, to this model. Okay. So, and, and those three, what are they? This so why, 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 the, why it, there are three uh, listed here? Yeah, because you have three. You have three terms, AR1, AR2, mm -hmm. and AR3. Those are the lags. Okay. okay. From the function. Remember the function? That yeah. the autocorrelation function, you have AR1, which is a constant, and the first lag. AR2 is going to be the constant first lag and second lag with their coefficients. Mm -hmm. And then AR3, which is this one, is going to be a constant AR1, AR2, and AR3. Okay. Okay. But so these, are, th these estimates are the coefficients of those, mm -hmm. uh, of, of, of those uh, parameters. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like the coefficients in a linear regression. Remember the linear regression? Yeah, yeah. When you yeah. say, okay, I want uh, income explained by uh, production. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So income is the response. Production is going to be one of the predictors with the intercept. And production is going to have an estimate. That's the coefficient. Okay. The same here. Okay. So, okay. I don't, so yeah. If, if, we had, if we had only two, A1 and A2, that means that the model has P equal to two. Okay, 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 because okay. there's only two autoregressive terms. Uh -huh. If there was an aim MA1, then you will have an AR2 and an a MA1 model in the ARIMA model. And you can construct that model with two, one difference in, and one uh, Q, Q1. Okay. Like I said, maybe the next example, we're going to you know talk about the uh, seasonal seasonal arima an example maybe uh it will you know kind, kind of click <laughs> all right okay so let's continue okay so in the forecasting remember that the arima models uh construct the equation okay to get forecast to get predictions is being constructed by the lags, okay? And the residual, lag two, right? Okay, it's a combination of lag terms and also residuals, but residuals are lag, okay? That, that's the moving average uh, part. So I made, you know, the, 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 the questions are there, but I made this drawing to see maybe we could understand better what we're talking about. Okay, can you see my drawing here? Okay, so let's say that we have a time series, right? Time series uh, from T1 to T equal to N, right? So the lapse observation of the time series, we're going to call it Y uh, T, right? Y T, which is the last one then the one preceding is going to be y t minus one, and then y t minus two until the first, right? You know, we're, we're, we're taking the time series from the last observation, you know, backwards, okay? So, ARIMA is going to give us, from that time series, is going to give us a prediction for the next uh, value. Okay, which is our first forecast. In other words, H equal to one, horizon equal to one. And it's going to be, uh, you know, name Y T plus one, right? Because T is the one, is the last observation that we have, right? So the next one is going to be T plus one, okay? And that uh, uh, forecast is composed 
in case of an ARIMA model of 211, okay, there's a difference in all that, but he has two lags, right? He has two lags and one uh, lag error, okay? Two, one, okay? So that forecast comes from the value yt, right? The value yt with the parameter, with the coefficient, and the value t minus one, okay? Two, two lags from t plus one. Then from the ma part, the, the errors, you're going to have an error there, okay? We will call it epsilon t, and then one lag error, okay? Which is going to be uh, t, t minus one, okay? So what happens when we want to go to the second forecast? The h equal to two, okay? Remember, the same way that you got the first forecast is the same procedure that Arima is going to use to get the second forecast, okay? So in this case, y t plus two, okay, which is the second forecast, is going to be the lag uh, y t math plus one plus y t, okay? It's going to be these two uh, parameters with the, with the coefficients. So in other words, your first forecast is going to be the lack of observation of your second forecast, <laughs> all right? And of course, the model, because it has uh, errors, right? M MA, MA errors is going to be epsilon T plus one plus epsilon T, <laughs> okay? So you always looking for that lag observation, depending on the order, the lag observation in the autoregression function and the MA function if there's an MA, M MA model, okay? And that's how ARIMA builds those forecasts. So in other words, the first forecast is going to be the first value of the lag of the second one. And the second one is going to be the lag of the third and so on, okay? That's why you see usually the ARIMA is going to be in non-seasonal ARIMA is going to be a flat line or it's going to have a drift, right? It's going to have a trend because it's a linear, it's a linear uh, equation that we're using for forecast, okay? Is that, you know, it, does the drawing, I guess you? Okay, that's the explanation for those mathematical <laughs> formulas that the, that the author presents, okay? But it's, it's uh, you know, the procedure is the same. ARIMA uses the lags and the residual lags to calculate future values, okay? And of course, it's going to be, it's, it's a linear equation. It's going to have, if, if it doesn't have a constant, it's going to be flat. If it has a constant, it's going to be a trend, okay? Uh, up or down, depending, okay? Sometimes the coefficients are negative, so it goes down, all right? Okay. <laughs> Let me tell you, to, to, get it, to, that, to get to that drawing, I had to, you know, <laughs> I, 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 had to, I had to put some, you know, <laughs> some gray matter there, <laughs> okay? <laughs> okay, so basically the, the, that's the explanation, the drawing is explanation for those, uh, for those equations, okay? All right, so we're, we're approaching the end, finally. <laughs> okay, so there's a section that the authors uh, uh, talk about seasonal ARIMA. All the ARIMA models that we have been talking uh, before are non-seasonal. In other words, the seasonality is not taken into account, okay? But in the real world, uh, some of the time series that we're going to be handling, uh, they have a seasonality, right? Uh, it could be a year seasonality, it could be weekly seasonality, monthly seasonality, etc. So to make things simple, okay? We understand that the real model has three parameters, right? Okay, P, D, Q. P for the AR model, D for the differencing, and Q for the MA, the residuals. Well, to incorporate the seasonal you know, part, we're going to add those three parameters plus one, okay? Those three parameters plus one 
to model the seasonality, okay? To, differ to differentiate from the original arima, which are the lowercase pdq, the seasonal parameters are capital PDQ, okay? So if you see a capital P, capital D, and capital Q in the RIMA model, that, re, that, that is associated with the seasonality part of the model, okay? But there's one, there's one additional component, which is the number of observations that compose that seasonality. So usually if we have a year seasonality and we have a monthly, monthly observations, you know, the date is based on a month observation, then that M, that small M is going to be translated to 12, okay? Because you have 12 months that compose a year, okay? If you have, let's say, a weekly seasonality and the observations are by day, for example, then that number would be seven, okay? Because you have seven days for each week. And go back to the year. If your data, if your day component is not in month, but it's in quarters, in other words, every three months, okay, you have those numbers. You don't have the monthly data, you have the quarter data, then that M instead of 12 is going to be four, all right? So you have to divide that seasonality divided by the period of seasonality and by the component that the, that the date uh, observation is given to you, okay? If it is month and year seasonality, M is 12. If it is quarter, year seasonality is four. If it is weekly, seasonality, and uh, they give it by day, if, um, let, let's say if they give it by hours, the, you know, the, 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 the weekly data is given by hours. You have to multiply 24 by seven. That's going to be the periods that compose that that seasonal period okay all right so let's do an example okay because i don't want to get too much involved in the you know in the mechanics of this uh you know these formulas okay so for the example of the seasonal we're going to take the monthly monthly okay so the date is by month uh monthly u.s leisure and hospitality employment from January 20, 2001 to September 2010, okay? So we plot that time series, right? And we see, okay, the first thing, the first thing, time series, stationary or not stationary? Non-stationary, right? Okay, so we have a increasing trend, right? It goes up and you can see the smoother, okay? And also, you see that there's a pattern, a regular pattern of ups and downs, which reflects the seasonality. And we're going to assume that the seasonality, because it's in, it's, it's the, the dates it by month, usually the seasonality in this case, it will be by years, right? And we can, you know, by the domain knowledge that we have on leisure, hospitality, hotels, for example, all that, we know that there's some seasons that the occupancy goes up and other seasons that it goes down, the high season, low season, et cetera. Okay. So first thing, if our data is not stationary, we have to convert it to a stationary. So because we have seasons, the differencing that we have to do now first is a seasonal difference. Okay. And we discussed that in the first chapters where instead of getting the observation that it was preceding that value, now we are going to deal with the observation and the observation preceding, but by the period of that season, okay? In other words, it's going to be January, uh, let's say that January uh, 2020 is going to be our, our last, uh, December, December 2019 is going to be our last observation. So for the seasonal, we're going to uh, subtract that value of December 2019 with the value of December 2018, 12 periods, okay? And that's how you get differencing both by season, okay? In other words, you are trying to uh, de-seasonalize, you know, this, uh, 
you know, this data. Okay, that, that's the first step. Then uh, we're going to use the same, the same uh, function differencing, but instead of, you know, not giving a parameter, because if you, if you don't give a parameter, it's going to be one, the period. Here, we're going to then give it the period 12. So it's going to do the differencing, but instead of the preceding one, it's going to look 12 before, okay, for each of the values, all right? Okay, so can we, just by looking at this, uh, you know, difference uh, time, time series, seasonal difference time series, do you think that time series is stationary or non-stationary? No, no, it's not stationary. Non stationary, right? Okay, no, no. it has it has ups, it has downs, ups. It has to be, you know, you know, kind of uniform, right? Okay, and random and everything. So this one, and um, because of also the ACF plot, look at the ACF plot, it has all the significant lags, right? Okay, usually the stationary, they don't have you know that many uh, significant lags, right? So clearly not stationary. So then we have to go one step further you know we have to go then doing the seasonal difference but also doing the traditional differencing from that data okay so for that we're going to do the same operation the time series original or real time series difference 12 and then apply a difference to that difference 12 okay so in other words we got the seasonal differencing already so now we're going to apply the, the difference in that we know, the one, the, the value and the preceding value, okay? And now we get something like this. Now it's, it's good, right? <laughs> now you can say that it's basically a stationary, okay? And now we can see also in the ACF and the PCF that there are not that many uh, significant lags, okay? They are, but they're not that many. And that's what we want, okay? Because remember, those lags are going to be the basis for our ARIMA model, okay? So let's try, like we did before, right? Let's try some manual models and then auto RIMA too, okay? So for this, we're going to try from the PAC, PACF, we're going to try the model 210, okay? With the seasonality, right, of zero, differencing one, and MA1, okay? This is totally arbitrary, okay? Then from the ACF, we're going to do the opposite, right? Because we have two significant lags. We're going to do AR0, differencing one, and then uh, uh, MA, MA2, okay? So we have two models with the same parameters for seasonality. Remember that in the seasonality, we have a, a difference of one. So we have to include it there. So capital D is going to be one and small d, that is the ARIMA model, the, the traditional ARIMA model is going to be one, two, you know, to combine those two differencing uh, functions, okay? And we're adding an MA component, all right? You with, with me? You're good, you're good, okay. So we have two manual models, and then we're going to do the auto RIMA. But this time, <coughs> we're going to change the default of the stepwise. It's going to be false. And also, we're going to, to speed up the, the calculations. Also, we're going to turn the approximation equal to false, OK? Because it does, internally, it does an approximation, OK? In that, you know, it's, it's, it's called the asymptotic, you know, approximation. Uh, we're going to discard that because if not, uh, probably it won't give us, you know, uh, uh, an, an optimal model. Okay. So when we run this and we do the same function, we do the pivot. Okay. Uh, we get our two models, you know, with their with their fitted model, and also we get the auto. So when we do the glance. We arrange by descending AIC, small c, corrected AIC, and select from dot model to BIC to get, you know, those parameters. Uh, oh, one thing that, that I forgot to mention, this log likelihood 
okay? It's associated with the MLE estimation that we're talking about. The only thing is that this, that this MLE, uh, a log is applied to it, okay? You know, to maintain the numbers uh, in, in a short range, okay? But this is really the, the maximum, the maximum uh, likelihood. And usually it should go, you know, in tandem with the AIC. The only thing that the AIC is minimized, the log likelihood is maximized, okay? So the bigger the log likelihood, the better the model. The lower the AIC, corrected AIC, the better the model, okay? So in this case, the winner is the auto arriba, all right? So again, what are the parameters of that auto arima, right? You know, what are the parameters that uh, the, the, the uh, automatic algorithm from arima have found that is better than our manual models? So we go again to the tidy, right? Uh, we filter by the by the auto model, the auto arima model, and then look what we get here. We got AR1, right? We got AR2. So we know that we have a model two, right? Two, one, because we difference by one, and we don't have any MA, right? There's no MA component. So we have an ARIMA, the first chunk of the ARIMA, the, the lower PDQs are 210 right? Then we have the seasonal arima, okay? That's the SAR, seasonal arima. That's the big, that's the, those are the big parameters, the capital parameters, capital P, capital D, capital Q. So capital P is one because there's only one AR, seasonal. Differencing is one, that's already taken care of. And then MA is also one, right? So the model that we have there is ARIMA 210 and the seasonal is 111 with an M, a small M of 12. Okay, which has the period, the, the period, the number of observations within each season, each, each seasonality period. Okay. So it's ARIMA, uh, it's um, um, one, 21. Uh... So the, the first one is. Uh, oh, if, if, you can, if, you can, if you can see it here. No, I don't see it. There's... No, no. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll put it in the in the in the chat. Yeah. Yeah. Arima two one zero. Two one zero. Okay. okay. That's the that's the non seasonal. That's the non seasonal parameters. Okay. The the small mm -hmm. PDQs. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. okay, because you have two ARs and no MA, right? Mm -hmm. You don't have an, any MA, so MA is zero here, okay? And you have one difference. You apply yeah. one difference, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's two, one, zero. Then for the seasonal, you have one AR, one autoregressive, one differencing because we difference by the season, and then we have one moving average, MA. Okay, so it's going to be one, 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 twelve. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, yeah. That's the notation for that model that the Orwarima found that is the best, is the is the um, optimal model. Okay. And again, we go through the same procedure. Let's check the residuals. How do they look? Okay, uh, they look fine. You know, uh, mean zero, right? You know, they go up and down. They don't have a trend or anything like that. Uh, in the in the a ACF, everything looks fine. The only thing is that there's one significant lag in 11. So we'll use our hypothesis test, the LGM box, to confirm if that lag is significant enough to, you know, throw out the, 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 the assumption. Then for this, even though there's some outliers, uh, the curve is basically a, a bell curve. So let's do that, right? Let's do the, the hypothesis testing and the value, the p-value for lag 24, right? And degrees of freedom four, because now we have small p equal to uh, small m 
uh, equal, uh, small q equals zero. So we have two there. We have large P, seasonal P, which is one, and MA, uh, large Q, one. which is one, two. So you have two, zero, oh. one, one. You add out a lot, it's four. That, uh -huh. Those are the degrees of freedom, okay? So with that information, we get a p-value of 0.68. So that flag, you know, even though it's significant, it doesn't affect the, 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 the model, okay? Our presumption that the residuals are uh, behaving in a random pattern. So we use that model to uh, forecast. And here we're forecasting for 36 periods. That means we're forecasting for three years. Okay, because we're forecasting by the period, right? You know, by the month, by the month. So 36 months, three years. And this is the forecast. Mm -hmm. As you see, it follows the seasonality, right? Of the mm -hmm. previous time series and also the trend. Okay, just a little bit less, you know, <coughs> uh, you know, the slope is a little bit less than the than 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 the than the actual series. Okay. So it is with this sample is now is is clear now. How do you de derive the parameters from that tidy function? Yes. Okay, excellent. Okay, so let me see if I can finish. <laughs> okay, so this section, the last section, finally. The last session is a comparison of ARIMA and uh, exponential uh, smoothing, in the ETS uh, uh, version, okay? Uh, I'm just going to read a couple of them, okay? But for example, there's a myth that ARIMA models are more general than exponential smoothing. They're not, okay? Both are general, you know, uh, uh, forecasting tools. Uh, many of the ARIMA models uh, they don't have some exponential smoothing counterparts. For example, in this table of equivalences, you see that there's an equivalency between ARIMA models, even seasonal models, right? And the ETS. But there's one that is missing in the ETS. I don't know if you remember, uh, Federica. ETS could be additive, could be none, right? or they could be multiplicative, exponential, okay? ARIMA doesn't have a uh, multiplicative, uh, you know, a, a math, uh, you know, a, a, a multiplicative option for the, for it's, the, because it's a linear, it's a linear regression. It's not a polynomial or anything like that. It's a linear. ETS has that advantage, okay? That if the series behaves as a multiplicative, in other words, it has a, you know, it, it, it has a, a, a polynomial, you know, a component, then ETS will be a better choice than ARIMA because ARIMA is strictly uh, linear regression. The only thing is applied to, you know, time series, okay? Uh, okay, and then ETS makes no assumption of the stationary <laughs> of the time series, okay? When we discuss exponential smoothing, there was no discussion about non-stationary or stationary. That came with ARIMA, okay? Because ARIMA needs the time series as a stationary to start with the, with the you know, with the, with the uh, you know, get, getting getting those parameters, uh, you know, to behave as, as a linear regression, okay? So ETS doesn't make that assumption, doesn't need that assumption of the, of the stationary. In fact, ETS models are all non-stationary. <laughs> by definition, okay, right, and basically that's it, okay. And there's a there's a there's a uh, there's an example uh, in the book in that section of comparing ARIMA with non-seasonal data and also with seasonal data, okay. And I'll leave it that to the uh, you know when we have some some leisure time, but it's the same process that we have been doing. Okay. All righty. Thank you. Okay, so uh, let's do the end, right? And.